Jennifer from FiberFlux. Welcome back to week three of the 2018 FiberFlux Summer Crochet Along. We are hard at work on our land and sea cardi. This is a cute sweater that is super easy to make and we're all working on it piece by piece. Now, so far we've talked a little bit about the supplies needed, kind of an overview of the project. Last week we worked on the granny hexagons. You'll need two of those of the same size. And then uh, this week we are gonna learn how to seam all of this together. Because our cardigan is two granny hexagons that you fold and you seam together, I'm gonna go through the entire process of how to do it. And then by the end of this video, you're gonna have a basic sweater shape for next week that you'll be ready to customize. And by customize, I mean adding length to your sleeves, adding length to the bottom of your cardigan as well. So without further ado, let's jump right in and learn how to put this whole thing together. Okay, so today we have our two hexagons and they're complete. Now you may want to kind of piece them together and sort of try them on. I used some clothespins to kind of hold mine together and I was able to kind of slip it on and see how it would fit before I commit to seaming it together. So you might wanna try doing that first. So once you have your two hexagons, what you're gonna do is we need to lay them out for seaming. So we need to get them positioned. They're kind of just a heap right now. So let's look at these just for a moment because I wanna clarify something. When you lay your hexagons out, and you probably noticed this while you were working on your hexagons, that see how they're ruffling up really bad? They're, they're it's uh, not laying like a perfectly flat hexagon. That is totally fine and it's, how it really is supposed to look. So if yours look like this and you were a little bit concerned while you were cr crocheting them, totally fine. So what we need to do is locate the top point of our hexagon and locate the bottom point of the other hexagon. And you should have two points on either side. What we're gonna do now is flip it over and then we're going to fold the top point down to the bottom point, just like so and then get it all straightened out. I also have photos and diagrams on the FiberFlux blog too, if you need a little bit of help um, seeing the visual for this. Now, it should look like this. It almost looks like a little um, poncho. So then we're gonna flip it so that it's sort of like an upside down L shape. See, this is the center of our hexagon and now it's folded, okay? So this is gonna end up being where your neck goes and where your arm goes. And this is the body of our cardigan, okay? So then we're going to repeat with the other hexagon. We're making two halves here. We're gonna take the top point and the bottom point and we're gonna fold them together. And this time we're gonna create a mirror image. So go ahead and flip that over. And as you can see, we have our sleeve on this side. This is the center of the hexagon folded inward. And then we have the center of our cardigan. And you can see this is where the your neck will go, okay? So really exciting. I think that the uh, construction of this is really cool once you put it together. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna seam everything together. The easiest way to do this that I think is to, now that you have it all laid out, so get it laid out the same way I have mine here, and then what we're gonna do is take our cardigan and open it up as if you we were about to put it on. So just open it up. So what that's gonna do is expose this inside part, okay? Now, when you fold your hexagons, make sure that the right side is facing out when you lay your piece like this. So the right side is the, the sides that faced you as you were working rounds. So make sure when you fold them, the right sides are facing outward. So then when you open up your sweater, the wrong side is what you see on the inside of your sweater, okay? Because if you have the wrong side and the right side mixed up, it won't look as nice, okay? So open up your sweater at this point, and then what we're going to do is grab some of the matching yarn. So I'm going to be grabbing this blue or aqua yarn because the last round I worked of my hexagons was aqua. So it's important to keep the coloring uh, consistent so when you seam, it'll blend a little bit better. So take a piece of yarn 
Now, depending on how big your sweater is will depend on how big you want your yarn. I'm going to do, oh, about, I would say 24 inches or so. You can always cut a new piece if you need it. It might be a little bit longer than 24 inches. Take your tapestry needle. Go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. And then what we're going to do is you can begin at the bottom or the top. It doesn't matter. But I like to have it laid out flat. So I'm going to start from the bottom. And you'll notice our granny squares, our hexagons rather, have curvy. They don't have really 90 degree angles here. So when you seam this together, what we're going to do is sandwich it. But you want to make sure you get that corner space to begin. And you're going to take it through both layers like a sandwich. And you're going to take it through. Now I cut a pretty long piece because we're going to go all the way up. I'm going to take mine through, but don't pull it all the way through. Pull it almost all the way through, and then go ahead and tie your yarn at the bottom. Now, as you've noticed, if you're using the dreamy yarn like I did, this is a very fuzzy and forgiving yarn. So make sure your seaming is nice and neat, but again, it is a very forgiving yarn. Okay, so what we're going to do, because this seam will go up the back of our cardigan, we want to make sure it's nice and neat. So as you seam, make sure when you go into the first piece, you're picking up two loops. Going into the next piece, into your sandwich, you're picking up two loops, okay? And then just pull it through. We're going to be whip stitching this. Now, if you prefer to do, uh, to slip stitch crochet it, feel free to do that. But the whip stitch lays nice and flat, and it's going to look nice and neat, too, for our piece. Okay, so go ahead and just work your whip stitch all the way up your sweater. Now making sure that you're going into both loops here, just like that with our tapestry needle. See I'm going through both loops, so I actually have four loops on my tapestry needle. And I'm just going to seam it all the way up. And I may have cut my piece a little bit too long because it's kind of snaggling there. Okay. And as a side note, snaggling is a technical term. <laughs> There's some words and things that we do that just don't have a special word attached to them. So sometimes we make up our own words. Okay. So going in both loops, we don't want to snag our yarn here. So just go nice and slow. There we go. And I like to also give it a little bit of tug so it's not uh, pulling so much. And as you can see, because we're keeping things very symmetrical, um, you want to make sure that, see these, these groups of double crochets? Make sure as you're seaming that they're lining up nice and neat because that will that will show quite a bit when you go to wear the cardigan. You want to make sure everything lines up just like a perfect mirror image. Okay. And we're just holding everything together, trying to get everything perfectly symmetrical. Okay. I'm going to continue sewing all the way up the back of this and then we'll rejoin in just a moment. I would recommend as you work, flip your piece over and look at your handiwork just to make sure that everything is lined up properly the way you want it to look. Okay, so I made it to the top. I'm just gonna get one more little stitch in there for good measure. And then I happen to have a tail at the top here. So I'm just gonna trim that and tie it right onto that tail. If you don't have a tail, that's fine. You can just kind of tie it into a knot. And then we will deal with all of these ends later. We're just going to kind of put those off for now and not worry about them. Okay, so now that our back of our cardigan is seamed up, you can just kind of straighten things out. And everything's lining up quite nicely. And you can also, like I mentioned before, kind of flip things over, check out your handiwork. Everything looks great. Okay. The next thing we want to do to seam our piece is you want to close your sweater back up. 
okay? And now the next thing we're going to do is seam the sleeves. So when we made a hexagon, all this is folded. These are folded edges, so we don't have to seam any of that. And I'm just gonna slide this over because we're just gonna do one side at a time. And this is where your arm will be coming out of. See, when you put your arm in there, it'll come out there. I'm trying to reach around here and show you. Uh, so the only part we need to seam is the top. So what I would do at this point is put the sweater on and see how far in you want to come. You can also, if you want to estimate, or if you're making this for someone else, just kind of fold it down and see where uh, the neck, you want the neck to be, the neck opening, okay? So at this point, I want to turn my sweater inside out because, now this could get a little bit confusing, so try to keep everything sort of lined up. Um, but we're gonna turn it inside out and we're going to seam up to the neck, okay? So this is the same sweater or same part. We're, we just have it inside out now, okay? And again, also we're gonna repeat it for the other side. And you can see that's the opening. And this is the, actually the outside, but we have it inside out. Because when you do the whip stitch, uh, it makes it a little bit neater to do it that way. Okay, so get your sleeve lined up. Now the, the best thing I would recommend is take one of these groupings and fold it in half. So that way, see how these groups are perfectly lined up and that's gonna help you seam things a little bit easier. Actually, I'm sorry, don't fold it in on that. Fold it so that they're each facing one another, okay? So just line those up just like that before you even begin, okay? And then that way, these corner spaces are lined up as well. So we're gonna do the same thing. Once again, we're gonna grab our blue yarn, and I'm gonna take, now this isn't as much seaming as the other part, but we're gonna cut our yarn and thread it onto our tapestry needle. Now we have the arm opening lined up. Now let's, well, I just pulled it apart. Let's, uh, there we go, it's all lined up. And let's line up this part as well. Do, taking a minute to do this helps a lot while you're seaming. Okay, so I'm gonna begin at this corner space here and let me grab my sweater so it doesn't fall off my table here. And I'm gonna start at, so this is the arm opening. I'm gonna start at this bottom part. Now you don't obviously wanna seam this close because you need to put your arm through there. But this will be up top of your arm and your shoulders, okay? So go ahead and insert into that corner space, those little chains that are in there Insert your needle into both loops of that first corner space of those chains and tie your yarn right on with that tail you've just created. And again, this yarn is fuzzy and forgiving and everything's gonna blend in very well, okay? So let's get these scissors out of the way. We're going to hold our pieces together as like a sandwich and just kind of, what I do is stick the, my fingers into these decorative holes and that will line up these two groupings. See how that lines that up so nicely? And we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna whip stitch both layers of our piece and go into you know, both loops of either side of your sandwich, okay? So also being mindful of keeping everything lined up as you work, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way across, and again, you'll want to kind of try your sweater on and see how far over you want to take it. Do you want it to be a large open neck hole, or do you want it to be more of like a more snug look? So definitely I would recommend trying this on first to see, because the whole project, the name of the game has been uh, customizing things. And actually next week we're going to take our customizing a bit farther and we're going to extend our sweater if needed. Some people might like to leave their sweater as is when you're done the construction today. 
but I'm going to show you how to lengthen the sleeves if you like. And I'm going to show you how to also um, lengthen the bottom of your sweater. If you want it to be more of a cropped sweater, you know, you could leave it be or waist length. But if you want it to be nice and long, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So next week we're going to be continuing the customization of our sweater. Okay, also stopping to check handiwork, make sure everything's nice and lined up. All right, I'm going to continue across and keep seaming my uh, piece here, and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and move on to the other side. Okay, so I took a little trip over to my dress form, and as you can see from the photo below, I went ahead and left all of these clothespins on to kind of show you. This helps me a lot when I'm piecing things together, not just garments, but other, other things as well that need to be seamed. So what I did was I used my clothespins to kind of close it all up and to see how far I wanted to come over. I wanted to see exactly where the neck would hit. So based on the size of mine, um, I'm going to bring mine to about here. I put a little stitch marker here. So I'm almost there. I just have to come over to this point. And that will make it have a nice little like opening here. Okay. So on this side, I'm going to go ahead and turn my piece inside out again. Actually, you know what? Let me put this back in here so I don't lose my spot. But I'm going to go ahead and turn this sleeve inside out again. And now we can just go right back into seaming. So let me find my needle and my piece of yarn. It really helps to kind of see as you go along how all this is going to fit together. And because we all come in different sizes and we all want different fits, you know, some of us want a more fitted look. Some of us are using different yarn and hooks all together. Um, but because they're, we're making so many different sizes and styles, really, um, you'll really want to kind of try it on as you go along. I'm just using my dress form because it allows me to work onto it without it being on me. It's a little bit easier to work onto something than onto myself. But you can do that as well. Okay, so we're just going to come all the way across with our stitches. And we're again, we're going to repeat this on the other side as well. So just come across with your tapestry needle. And then once you get to your little spot that you marked before, you can take that out. This is actually a knitting stitch holder, but it works nice for chunky yarn. Okay, so we're now at the edge here. And I'm just going to, before you pull it all the way through, just run your needle through that loop like that, and then just pull to tighten, okay? And then you can just do another knot if you like. I always like to do that, especially things that you wear tend to get, um, whoops, tend to get a little bit more uh, wear and tear. And they, they pull more because you're actually using them. And when you wear things, it's a lot of times throughout the day. Okay, so we will deal with that tail later. And then we're going to hop on over to the other side and finish this other side here and now I've already marked it so I know exactly where to sit so just repeat on the other side okay so I'm just coming up to the edge here now you can kind of see I have one little grouping here left and then my corner and then one little grouping here and my corner so we're at the same point here of our sweater so what I want to do next is and again this is uh, inside out okay and again, we have this inside out. So what we're going to do is just take our needle and fasten it off to create a nice little knot here. And then we can do just another one, again, for good measure. And we'll just leave that tail alone for now. If you want to weave the ends in, uh, please feel free. But I'm just going to not worry about them. Okay, so the exciting moment where we are going to put our sweater right side out. And again, keep trying this on as you go. It helps a lot. I found that I really um, got a lot of insight from doing that. Okay, so let's flip this around. 
And now our sweater, our cardigan is all seamed up. We are really making some good headway on our sweater here. Now, you can do a few things. So next week, we is all gonna be all about customization. Now that we have the basic, I'm gonna tuck all these ends in and just act like they're not here for right now. So we have our basic sweater. It is seamed at the top. We have our armholes complete, and they're nice and wide, so they're gonna have some beautiful drape. And it opens up in the front. Um, it's seamed in the back, and we've done the same on the other side. So you now have the basic sweater all seamed up. So next week, we're going to learn how to add a little length onto our sleeves if we like. We're going to learn how to add some length to the bottom of our sweater. Now that this is seamed and our hexagons are reconfigured, rather, uh, from what they were when we first were making them, uh, we're going to have to work this bottom in rows. We're going to work granny stripes, basically. Um, and then these will be worked in the round. So if you'd like to add some length to your sleeves, if you'd like to add some length to the bottom, we'll learn how to do all that. And we're also going to weave in all of these ends. So we're just going to be really wrapping it up and customizing it next week. Now you know how it's put together and how it's seamed and you have the basic sweater shape. So hop on over to the FiberFlex blog because I do have some photos of how to do it as well. And also hop on over to the Ravelry crochet along group because we're seeing some beautiful photos, some color combinations, and it's a wonderful positive place where people just jump right in and help other people. So you have questions, it's a great place to um, ask people's even opinion of yarn colors even. I've seen people do that before too. So check out that group, the link's down below for that. And as always, use the hashtag um, FiberFluxCow in all your photos on social media so you can share your photos and we can see everyone's photos all together. So that's it for this week. Now next week, we're going to be learning how to, once everything's all seamed up, we're gonna learn how to customize our sweater. So you're gonna add some length onto your sleeves, some length onto the bottom of the uh, sweater. And so it'll really be uh, truly uh, your sweater at that point. Also, we're gonna do a quick tutorial on weaving in ends and the different types of ends you'll encounter if you're not familiar with weaving in ends as well. So join us next week. It'll be the very last week of our crochet along. I can't believe it, it went by so fast because we were having so much fun. So keep sharing those photos, say hello in the group, and hit that subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates, and I will see you next week. We're gonna customize our sweater, it's super exciting. Thanks so much for watching, bye everyone. Bye.